everyone, I'm Holly with Missouri River Soap and today I'm making the Un-OMH Soap. Now what is that, you probably are asking? Well, OMH usually stands for Oatmeal, Milk, and Honey. And this is a fragrance. There are several variations of it, but the one I use is just creamy and powdery and sweet and delicious and I just love it so much. The thing is, most oatmeal, milk, and honey soaps are often made with animal milk and oatmeal and honey. Well, I make a vegan version with coconut milk and I don't add any oatmeal and I don't add any honey, so thus the un-OMH soap. So I already have the coconut milk in there and I just added in the lye solution and now it's time to give it a really nice blend. I'm working in stainless steel pots now because I needed the size. This one is a 16 quart and it is filled right to the brim. It's taking a little bit of time to get used to this large stick blender. It's a very tall shaft and I really do need two hands to operate it. It's not the most fun making batches this large, but that's what I'm going to do for right now. It's actually quite heavy. These are about 40 to 45 pounds in the pot. And so you can see here, I'm really struggling trying to get my bearings on how I'm going to grab that little sucker. And there we go. Whew. I do hold my breath every single time I go to pour for that first time. It is very heavy. And I do have a couple of injuries from hauling the large buckets around and lifting. And I just gotta say, 45 pounds in this position and you know, in this pot is a little awkward for the body. My camera is having a hard time focusing on this video. There were several occasions that it was just very blurry, but I'm adding in the fragrance, and this is the Oatmeal Milk and Honey Fragrance, and it is so lovely. Now I'm adding in some titanium dioxide. That's going to help lighten up this part of the batch so that it's a little bit more creamy. So I went ahead and left this in because you can still see it pretty well, but unfortunately it is a little blurry. Of course, it decides to clear up now, but we're thankful for that anyway. So now, looking back on this batch and previous batches, I believe that I was supposed to add a little titanium dioxide to this part of the batch too. So both parts were going to have titanium dioxide, but one was just going to be a little bit uh, more than the other. And so the re end result of the soap is different, but it's still quite beautiful. And now hopefully I'll remember that for the next time. So I'm going to do just a simple pour. I'm just going to go back and forth.
So now I'm going to use my hanger tool. This is from Nurture Soap Supplies. Here I'm doing pretty wide loops just from the top down to the bottom. Now this direction I'm kind of going a little quicker and smaller loops inside. I ended up swirling it quite a bit but the batter was very thick and usually can get away with more swirlies when the batter is thick. So now I'm just going to do some um, swirly eight designs on the top. I do get five loaves from this batch, so I'm just kind of guessing where those are going to be. <laughs> I noticed here, do you ever, your brain just is like, uh, do not compute. <laughs> I could not get those eights going there. I've always been like that. Like I can do a design for a little while and then my brain is like, uh, what are we doing again? So now I'm just cleaning off the edges. It just makes for a, a nice finish to the soap. And when the soap is solid and then I pull away the freezer paper, I don't have a bunch of bumpy ridges on the edge. And so I don't have to break those off. I don't have to bevel those down. It's just, it makes for a nice finish. So I'm giving it a good smack or doodle break up any air bubbles that might be in there. Okay, so it's been a little while and it's time to cut this soap. And you can see the discoloration on the top of this batch and that's where especially I would have liked to have done it like I did previously. But every time I make a batch I learn something new and so I learned that's something I like to do is make sure that the whole batch has titanium dioxide. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I about lost my cutter there. Holy moly. So this uh, batch did turn out a little bit darker than the last one. It is, it is beautiful. The previous batch, the swirls weren't quite as discernible. So I do like that part of this batch is that that color, there's more contrast between the two different colors. Okay, so see here you can see that the vanillin has discolored the soap where the air has infiltrated it. Here's one of the bars that I cut from before, so you can see it's all very uniform. But when there's vanillin in a fragrance, it needs the oxygen in the air to begin its discoloration. So when soap's not cut, that still is an untouched area on the inside, but it does, you know, seep in over the course of time as the soap is curing. But when you cut the bars, of course, that kind of fast tracks it, you know, for each one. And you might find that when you're using a soap with vanillin um, in it where it discolors like this, after, you know, a while you start getting into the center of the bar, you may find that it's uh, quite a bit creamier and lighter than the outside. So I'm just making up some samples here. I do love to send out samples. I don't sell them because I send them all out for free in orders. It's a little gift from me to you and that you can try something that maybe you haven't tried before. So you can see on this loaf that it's quite a bit darker on the outside. We do cut the loaves first and put them back on the tray. I usually cut a loaf or two and put them aside just so that they can go ahead and discolor and start curing before I get around to the video. Need to get this tray moved around because it was really annoying me having to stretch clear over to the other side to put the bars down. 
So here we are on the last loaf, it looks like. So here we've had a bar that's had a chance to discolor and this is pretty authentic to how it's going to be in the final product. So here we have the whole tray. I'm going to go put this on the curing rack. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later guys.